I'm going to radically disagree with your characterization of law, but not now. Um, <laughs> so I want to take some questions. Yeah. Michael Barris. Uh, uh, two points that may, that may give it some kind of theoretical framework. One, I'll talk first about the science part and the knowledge, the, the, the identity of knowledge, the recognition of knowledge. Uh, and, and the first thing that comes to my mind would be, would be Peirce's uh, uh, conceptualization of scientific knowledge as a convergence towards a point uh, utilizing the fact that there's more knowledge. So uh, I, I accept the model of the doctor not being insulted, although that could be an ego question with certain doctors, not with you if, you're, if you raise the issue, but of knowing more, but of taking decisions. Uh, and the other, the other point you know, is the, the internet, in a certain sense, facilitates a, a, pra a pragmaticist definition of knowledge where the more you know, it still needs the function of, of converging towards a certain point uh, for verification uh, in case there's any question of fallibility. Uh, but the second thing is, and this was fascinating in uh, this the second time we've seen this morning that, that Chuba uh, Barabba Shakta on the film of women. Because the, uh, which I mentioned it before, uh, the, there's a sentence there he, where, where, where Bersha talks about knowing me atzmo. me atzmo, kolom kol Which means he's talking about a certain type of internalization. And I would put that in the framework of Hart's rule of recognition. In other words, we have to identify who a posig <laughs> is. Now, it could be that in the modern genre of writing chuvas, and before uh, Rav Malamed, uh, was Chaim David Levy in full Makor Chaim, we put him in some kind of a machshav, a framework, etc. Uh, that's the buy over the community, but you have to be an authority. And if you know you're just culling the internet, you're not going to you're not going to get it from your community. You're not going to be recognized as an Allahic authority. And this is even within the digital age, not only on the eve of the age. Not only people that made a transition from the printed word and on, you have to be recognized as someone who has it from himself. Torah di Levi. Uh, and and the fact that it's just read it somewhere isn't gonna uh, gain gain coin, I mean, whatever it is, the, the credence with your community. So I would say that the concept of community, both in identifying what knowledge is scientifically, on the other hand, of it has to be your knowledge, something that I can trust you, are both things that have a uh, theoretical framework. So I agree, but I think that the maximo, right, because. He's saying, as opposed to having researched it, right? To me, that's what was so. It, that's the word that struck me. Is that's exactly not what we found. My law students said, knowing it maximo means, right? Knowing the law means being able to research it, digest it, assemble it, right? And Rav Shachter is saying something else. Like, so, like knowing it without the computer, without my like policy, without we go with the Phil Shachter of the those with the policy considerations. And maybe people aren't willing to reveal. They want to keep it. I, 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 I want to say something about about something about. The, very uh, uh, difficult question as a physician to, to re respond to is who is the patient who should eat in Yom Kippur? Who is? Who is the patient who should eat in Yom Kippur? There are very few medical situations that it's very clear that you cannot really stand 24 hours without, without any food or, 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 or liquid. And, and it's really a question of uh, judgment. And, and and the problem is that in this model, when I'm saying that uh, I don't have really uh, um, knowledge advantage over the, pa the patient, and I don't really have a knowledge advantage over a rabbi, the question is back here into, this, uh, in, into the real world. Who is the, the people who judge for, for who is, should, should not eat in Yom Kippur? And, and I think that the, the previous uh, thing was that the doctors know it for at, uh, maatsmo, you get maatsmo, and, and this is not true. Okay, let, let's just try to get some, some questions sure. in. I would like to just uh, address this question. Um, I think there is a, a distinction between um, rules of recognition about law and scholarship. And the, the post or whatever would be, I think, described in terms of um, arts um, rules of recognition. Maybe the distinction from Frederick Schauer would be interesting between to be an authority and to be in authority. And to be in authority, you may be cracked, but to be to become an authority, then you need to be recognized, not by heart, yes. but recognized by yes. uh, colleagues. Thank you. 
Okay, let's just take some questions. Um, I had a, uh, and then we'll a few questions. Um, I also, first of all, I thought that the um, the de-emphasis of the organizational structure of the tour uh, was surprising to me. As we talk about the organizational structure of halacha, it's not the organizational structure of the Mishnah that dominates anymore. It's the organizational structure of the tour, which has become the sole organizational structure present in Halakha. It's easy to miss that, but I, but the Mishnah isn't the way we organize. I was just talking about four. Yeah, no, I understand. I also thought the fake right, go left, Igris Moshe was a very astute observation, but you know as well, Moshe frequently fakes left and goes right, as for example he does in Gerus, where he opens his first two on Gerus, explaining why really all conversions could be valid. He says, as far as to validate them all, and then never again in his 17 true vote on Gerus does he make reference to this liberal position which he subsequently uh, discards. Fake right, go left, fake left, go right is a fairly common motif in many Shailodu uh, true vote. I thought the distinction between codes and true vote was also somewhat missing. By definition, a person who has a code has an overarching approach to life which then uh, drips down, whereas well, frequently true vote writers are internally inconsistent because they're answering individualized questions without a theme. My sense in law, Chaim, is that although um, specialization is prized, judges look down on all the specialists. There have been many studies which show that on appeal, bankruptcy judges, for example, always lose. <coughs> In the sense that they do, but you can think the other way. They, the bankruptcy bar and the ERISA bar hate it when the Supreme Court takes one of their cases because they say they're certainly going to screw it up. Oh well, so let me, without discussing who's right and who's wrong, I think that uh, judges tend to much more value um, generalists over specialists. Practitioners um, inevitably value specialists over generalists. And by the way, the same trend runs in nitty-gritty areas of halakha. If you ever want to build a mikvah in your community, you're directed to a mikvah specialist who really uh, knows only a little bit about halakha mikvahs, but he knows the one important thing you need, which is what's the grade of concrete it takes um, to build a mikvah that doesn't collapse. There's, there's a tension in halakha between the specialists and the generalists. I don't think it's such a pronounced difference. American law still prizes generalists as judges. If you excuse me, gedolim. If you look at court of appeals judges, who are really the gedolim in our system, or Supreme Court justices, they tend to be uh, generalists. And if you look at narrow experts, they tend to be specialists. I also thought that you were understating the educated consumer in law. Uh, anytime you do corporate work, the client is inevitably a lawyer. 90% of the money law sure. involves a highly educated consumer sure. rather than... Um, then he's already a specialist. Well, uh, uh, however you want to think about it, when you do bankruptcy work for sure. Davis, Polk, and Wardwell, the client is a bankruptcy lawyer himself who's the general counsel of a Fortune 500 company that's filed for bankruptcy. And while you might know more bankruptcy law than he does, he, you know, he's not just... Uh, some guy who happens to head Delta Airlines who's in need of some random piece of advice. There are, law has dramatically changed as well because educated consumers are maybe not the norm when you're arrested for dealing heroin in, uh, in Central Park. Um, although they are repeat customers. <laughs> although maybe it's their third trip and they know quite a bit. Um, they're certainly in commercial law conversations the client is frequently a well-educated attorney themselves who works in-house for a company. So I just thought that the educated consumer in Halakha is the same way. I've noticed this in my last 20 years of answering shilas. There are two consumers. One is the yeshiva-educated person who has a shila in which he already knows the various opinions and he's just looking for my view, um, which is quite a bit different from the person who is just starting out in the business and is genuinely looking for a PSOC completely ignorant of the various possibilities. Okay, let's just take a few more. Uh, yeah. um, so, uh, I, uh, my question is going to be a lot shorter because you said a lot of what I was going I'm to so ask. Sorry. I would just, no, I think it's a good thing. Um, uh, so, I, just the two quick points um, on, uh, directed to Chaim, um, on the 
choosing your paradigm as the bar versus the judge, it might help you to um, define what you mean by authority, because I think the most natural to me, if you're talking about an analogy to somebody that's going to issue a sock, that sounds to me kind of like a judge, which does fit the generalist model. You know, talking about Oliver Wendell Holmes, he was hearing, or any justice on the Supreme Court, he's going to see, or she is going to hear um, the mining regulations to the commercial law to any which way you have it, and by virtue of getting to be the final say on the matter, that under one definition of authority, that's the supreme authority. Um, and then uh, on how much the law model tracks the medicine model, um, I, I think it, it, it does certainly apply to um, the specialist client, but Lavdavka, um, I think if you talk about criminal law, and not just you know repeat players, uh, but people that have seen a lot of episodes of CSI. Um, there is this perceived sense of what, uh, uh, whether to go to trial or to take a plea deal, uh, that's not based on any deep knowledge of law, but just sort of based on fervent uh, beliefs about what's going to happen to you in the judicial system, uh, or, or um, uh, I think even jury members have this, um, the CSI effect. Uh, so I, I think there is more of a similarity between um, this phenomenon in medicine and, 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 and in law than, than maybe um, you're giving credit for. Well, two comments. First of all, uh, uh, with respect to the medical issues that you're talking about, um, I think that um, it would be interesting that you conflated all medical. I understand you didn't have a lot of time, but I think that um, there are two different kinds of issues. One where, you, where there is an answer, you can get on the internet and see what double-blind studies have been done and how things have been treated and how, how it behaves in the population. And then there are cases which are probably the ones that you see on a more regular basis because of your expertise, which are at the edge of the envelope where there are no double-blind studies. If somebody is very sick and you need to... And because if there are double-blind study with a minimal advantage, and there are uh, adverse effects of the drug, the patient can say, I, uh, no, no, I don't what, want to, but what, but wait, but, but I prefer thing is, not. Uh, no, in the end, the patient gets to make the decision because it's their life and they're the ones that are going to live with the consequences. But in asking the question as to what the expert, what, what constitutes expertise and you know, what the purpose of the knowledge is, you, can, if you have experience, you have a body of experience, okay, that no matter what somebody goes down the internet, they can't find a net differentiate. The, the other comment that I wanted to make is that, is that the difference between the three domains that we've been ta talked about is, and wasn't really addressed explicitly, is that there is accountability in medicine and the law that there isn't in Rabanus. Okay, and the issue is, the fact that you're talking about Rav Shefton Tshuva and that it, everybody is aware of the Tshuva, is very different than the way Halakha, you know, uh, operated before. And he's become accountable in a positive or negative way. It's much easier to find out. Uh, there is no malpractice for our body. If somebody doesn't write it to them, you're going to say, well, you not know, here. you're not, not going to get... You're there gonna is, get, it's, just, it's just not an offense. You're not going to get nailed for it. <laughs> the, question really, the question really becomes to what degree the digital age uh, will impact the way people write to them because of the fact that it's immediately available to other people. Okay, we take one more uh, question and then allow the panel to ask And I want, uh, you're wrong, you're wrong on that. I want to uh, return to the response of uh, Rabbi Hersh Shechter because there are two uh, interpretations that I can think of what he says. He doesn't really explain what he means and, and why uh, the, uh, the response that uh, is drawn from the internet or from the Poetashut or Tzar Chuchma, why, why is, is it wrong? Uh, one way is, uh, and that's uh, the Korach, uh, may, maybe, maybe uh, the explanation, that you cannot uh, draw the, uh, the response from the internet because you are uh, making a subjective uh, interpretation of the halacha and you, you must be objective. And uh, to be ob objective, you, you must uh, turn to, to the rabbis. 
that is one exp explanation. Another explanation is that the knowledge, the halachic knowledge, is much more than is written in the uh, books or in the internet. And uh, this knowledge cannot, cannot be uh, transferred uh, by uh, means of uh, writing or uh, etc. How did you, uh, you, you what, what, what was the, the real and interpretation of uh, his response in, in your opinion? Uh, All right, we'll, so we'll, get, we'll make this a lot. We're going to okay, start with me. Fine. So the answer to the immediate question, he actually has worked out um, across a lot of his uh, writings and, and speeches, um, it seems that he he believes that there is a class of people who are, I mean, he even, um, he even goes back to the Ramban on al Torah, Asher Yorucha, that there's a certain degree of divine guidance. I Meaning he, at the end, what's under under it all, there's, there, there's a certain oracular effect um, that applies to people in a certain class, a certain class of metaphysical. Correct. He goes to the Ramban, metaphysical explanation that there are certain, there's a certain hashkacha prati, there's a certain divine guidance that people in a certain class of poskim get. Uses this to answer meaning there's a famous contradiction between the sifrei on al piyatorah shayurucha and the first mishnah in horayot, and he picks up on the difference that. In the Mishnah in Horayot, it says Ra'oi, you know, the, the key language is uh, Ra'oi Lahorot. But somebody who's Ra'oi Lahorot gets a certain amount of divine guidance and can take issue with uh, other, with fellow great postkin, but somebody who's not in that class um, simply can't. But, um, but, I wanna... but in the last paragraph, in the, he, sp he spoke against the people from Yeshiva University. They are not uh, <laughs> anyone. They are rabbis from Correct. Yeshiva University. Correct. That he's, he's Correct. He wouldn't say that every rabbi is part of that class. He would say that very select few rabbinim are part of that class. Um, I want to come back to uh, what Dr. Mike, yeah, Michael Barris. Michael Barris said, um, I agree that expertise, we're not using the, the end of expertise. There will always be expertise. Um, my point was that expertise is going to have a different structure. It's going to it's going to look different um, because knowledge is going to be structured differently. I mean, it it it, it helps to look back. I mean, oral mastery of an oral text, memorization of an oral text, is was a different set of skills than facility with written text. Mastery of you know written texts like Shari Dura is very different than mastery of printed texts like the Shulchan Aruch and the Nosei Kalim. And I think that we're witnessing a similar shift in what it means to be an expert. It's um, and there's a paradigm act, just like a manuscript and a book are fundamentally different sources of knowledge, um, there's a paradigm that's after the book. Now, it's hard to, because it's a digital paradigm, it's difficult to point to a, an object, but if we're going to point to an object, the object that I would point to is the source sheet. If you consider it, the source sheet is a relatively, it's a relatively new um, invention. Right, have all the sources in front of you on the page. It only became possible in the last generation when you could Xerox something and you know first you, you actually literally would cut and paste, and now you digitally cut and paste. Um, but what you're doing is you're creating a new work um, in which the texts aren't talking to what comes before and after it in the text or what's indexed in the margins, but you're taking new text and you're creating a, a new network of texts that are in dialogue with each other. And you're the one who's kind of pulling that together. Um, and I think that that sort of maps uh, what I would call a, a neural network, a, a web of connections <coughs> that the way to attain expertise is to, is to become, is to, to, to develop a facility with that sort of thinking of putting texts into dialogue with each other. It's easy for me, I have ADD. Everything's always, you know, all over the place. Um, but, um, but but I think it's a post-book um, paradigm of learning. Um, I just want to also very quickly respond to um, to your question. Um, you know, there's been a lot of writing about the location of knowledge, uh, especially in the digital age. So on the one hand, we had a, di a distinction between a kind of embodied knowledge, which perhaps perhaps some shechters referring to. Uh, which would we would think would harken back to earlier models, and our uh, our 
our way of using uh, our smartphones, where we always know what happened in 1793, within three seconds. I mean, is there such a big difference between the three seconds and the millisecond? At, at the same time, and I did not have a chance to talk about this in my talk, um, there were technologies within uh, that formative oral stage in which it's clear that people did not have all of the knowledge in their head. And it wasn't embodied. The most famous example were these tanaim, these reciters, which would be brought in as human tape recorders. They would recite the text, and then you would be able to. Um, so, you know, the more things change, the more they say, stay the same. Yes, there is a distinction between knowledge via my smartphone and what I've embodied, but even in the earlier models, you have different forms of where the knowledge is located vis a vis the decider or the exigent. I have one, one comment that I think is very important because someone mentioned here the difference between the Sheila of Tamil Chacham and the Sheila of Baal Bait. And I think this is the kind of things that medicine is much ahead of halacha. Because when you are discriminating the question because according to the old knowledge of, of the person who is asking the question, you are still playing at the old game yard. And the same happened in medicine when doctors tried to, they started to understand this new world, they still gave more weight for, if, if the patient was a professor, a law professor, and he came in after he was re reading all the stuff in the internet, so they treat him like this, and if it was a simple woman that doesn't speak English, they, they treat her differently. And it's become, and that's the, the cartoon that I had that showed how people are work, going into the internet differently, not by the way of how they educate, and not by how they are uh, speak very uh, uh, rich language or whatever, and just because how pressing the problem is. If you are in a life-threatening uh, situation, it doesn't matter if you are a professor or, or, or a plumber. If you are in a life-threatening situation. And if you have a minor problem, it doesn't matter either. And that's if you are going, if you're taking it to a religious issue, you will see that all the debates that are out there are not something of knowledge of know what written in Shulchan Aruch and Boskim. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a, cl a, <coughs> a, shoot, a, a clash between people who have something that is, hurts to them. If, if it's all in a Shota Kotel or it's uh, anything that, that you can imagine. If it's really something that bothers me, I will be there and I will be there, uh, out there and I will at the end will change something. And it's not a question of how educated I am, but how this issue is really hurts for me. Alrighty, I think we're out of time. Thank you very much.